today I'd like to share a few art supplies that I have acquired recently. I will unbox them, test them with you guys. Please get yourself a cup of your favorite brew and join me for this relaxing session. I do live in New Zealand, so all the shops that I go to in the video are based around here, so my local places. But I will share links under the video so that you can check them out for yourself, even if you live overseas. Make sure to go and uh, have a look at what your local art shops and craft shops have. And uh, if you can support your local little companies, uh, it's always the best. And for those of you that are new here, hi, I'm Layla, professional artist. Welcome to my art studio. Okay, so the first thing I want to unbox is this paint. So here we go. Now, from what I understand, uh, it's a student grade paint. So it should be perfect for some of my classes, especially holiday classes. Let's see. Okay, so it slides out. And now this, this paint is called Artis Decor Watercolor. Wow, so it has 88 colors. Oh, look at that. That comes with that, you know, water pen. This is quite nice. I didn't even realize. Hmm. And this can be used as a palette, I guess, as well, to mix paint on. Okay, wow, look at this. Not sure what that is for, probably to absorb or create textures. So as I said, this is a student grade paint. And I'll probably be using it in my kids' classes. And this is very handy. These are great, especially if you like doing outdoor sketches. I do a lot of outdoor sketches, but I tend to take my brushes with me. But if you just can take only one brush and you can't take water with you, these come in very handy. You fill them up with water. And you press and a little bit of water comes out. Now, before testing this, especially when, when paint comes in these little um, solid blocks, I do like to add a little bit of water. Uh, you can drop the water, you can spray it, whatever, you know, whatever's better. So let's spray this side because this is the one I want to test first. And then we can test all the specialty colors. In it. And I'm going to leave it for a few seconds to soften up. Now, while I'm doing that, I'm going to prep my paper. And actually, another thing that I got is this tape. Now, I got it from a Hobby City shop. This place is pretty cool. It's got all sorts of different bits and pieces. A lot of it is, of course, focused on model making and putting things together and really cool toys and gadgets and things like that. But my favorite section is the section where you get the super cool, fine, fine little brushes, little tools for cleaning things up. And of course, this magnificent tape that I've been looking for a while to get something so thin. And here we go. I found it in this shop. Couldn't find it in the art shop, um, but I found it in this one. It's a masking tape that is soft tack, so it comes off without damaging your artwork, but it's very, very thin. So this one is two millimeters wide, and this one is six millimeters wide. I have been using things like this. This is a soft tack, uh, but it, this is the thinnest that it comes in the art shop. I'll actually show you the art shop as well later in the video. And I've also been using things like this. I think this is like a washi tape or whatever it is called. But it's got such a bad grip that to stick it on, you actually have to press it on like five times. So sometimes it is ridiculous. It is quite comfortable. It's little to take with you if you're traveling and painting at the same time. But this is quite cool. So I want to test out this thinner, paint, thinner tape that I got from, again, I'll leave all the links. You guys can have a look under the video. I haven't used this before, so this is the first time. So it does say it's a velvet touch, so it should be very soft. 
Oh my gosh, it's so thin. It's so lovely. And it is quite sticky. I'm going to divide this in fours just to make it a little bit easier to orientate for us. Okay, so, so far I absolutely love the tape. It does feel like a very soft tag, it, it, but it's sticky enough to stick quite well from the first go. I have a really good feeling about this. A big shout out to that shop. They don't even know I'm filming this. Okay, so now let's test out the paint. So as you can see, I have divided it like this like this and like this so each one of these will be corresponding to these colors first color let's try this out it's white here we go well it doesn't really show up on the white paper but it does have a really nice creamy silky sort of a texture now this paint is perfect for real beginners and why is that is because these little blocks are so hard it's very hard to pick up a lot of paint so for those of you who are professional you'll probably find this very frustrating I can already feel it you know but if you're a total beginner or if you love painting with your children this seems like a very um, you know, paint that's hard to pick up, so you're not going to be overusing it because that's a number one issue with a lot of people when they just start up using watercolor is picking up too much paint and using it like you would acrylic or oils or something like that. Would you like to see more videos, more in-depth tutorials? Uh, would you like to see videos where I go traveling uh, through New Zealand and sketching all over the place? Uh, would you like to see me trying out more materials? And would you like to learn about things that you can improve in your own art through critique videos that are already happening on patreon so make sure to go check it out and you might find that you would like to join as well and become one of the special group of my patrons um, we have lots of chats and we look at different things and we do voting for the next favorite video and all sorts of fun things so make sure that you uh, check it out and join and that way you'll be able to support this channel and also get a lot of really cool extra things for yourself so check out the tiers and find the one that you might like the best and hopefully i'll see you there now where was i this paint is definitely for a beginner if you have been painting for a while or you already have few sets of watercolor i probably would not suggest getting this but if you are just a beginner and you want to have lots of different colors versus mixing them yourself then this can be a fun thing to try all the colors seem to be quite chalky which actually uh, is quite a common theme with baked pens so you can see how these are very sort of a hard shaped little blocks i don't know if it's because of the recipe or because of the process they seem to be very chalky almost like there is lack of transparency and they're kind of almost halfway through towards uh, gouache paint Okay, so here is the tried out and almost dried this side of um, the palette. So all the regular paints and here we've got specialty colors as well. So I'll try that out next. So let's remove the masking tape because I used a hair dryer. It sort of bubbled a little bit, which is absolutely normal. Happens with all tape. Yeah, it did not bleed at all. Look at that and see how easy it comes off. Yeah, it's definitely not going to hurt your um, paper or any surface. You might even work on more fragile surface than paper. So yeah, I definitely recommend this tape. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, I'm so happy I got it, you guys. As I said, I've been looking for something like this for a while and now... I've got it. I just wish they also made this tape in white or transparent, then it will not interfere with the colors. So far, what can I tell you about this? There's definitely a huge variety of colors, but as always, I find with sets that have a lot of color, they tend to have a lot of very similar shades. So for example, this and this are very similar. To achieve this color, you can just mix a bit of this and this together and you are good to go. 
uh, or you know these greens I mean you know very similar as well if you are a kind of a person that wants to really get into your color theory and learn how to mix specific shades yourself I would suggest having less colors on your palette but if you are a beginner and you're so excited when you see such a jeweled uh, colored palette you know it's such a big variety then something like this can really give you quite a bit of fun um, so yeah so this is my verdict for this side so far now let's try these colors because metal colors usually tend to be a little bit stiffer and that's pretty much with all the brands um, I do like to apply quite a bit of water onto them and just leave them for a little bit before testing them out okay so now I have reused this tape Again, just to see how it goes the second time. And this uh, paint is all sort of wet. And you can kind of see that some of the water has even changed color. So this will be interesting to see how it performs. Uh, because of the uh, shimmery paints that are here, you know, the specialty paints, the highlighting paints and the shimmery ones. So I'll try the shimmery ones out on black paper as well, just so that we can have a feel for how opaque they are and because I know some people when they use metallic paints they like to use them on different color paper as well not just white okay so it's actually a really nice really creamy but as I said I did drip drop this water and left them for about maybe five minutes okay oh really lovely and pearly yeah that's nice this gold like color now this paint doesn't seem to have any kind of names for colors any pigments which again just points out that this is a uh, student grade you know it's not a professional paint and anyway here we go that's lovely that's an interesting color as well hmm, these are surprisingly creamy but then again you know leaving that drop on there. I think they did a really good job as well of softening them up. Some of these look more beautiful in the pans than they do on the paper and some the other way around. They look quite flat in the pan but look beautiful on the paper. So I guess it's quite a different sort of situation with the, each color. And of course the dark ones would always look better on light colored paper and the lighter ones like silver and gold would look beautiful on dark paper as well. Okay, so let's see how these metallic paints have um, turned out. Uh, because they're all dry now so we can have a really good assessment of the quality and the colors and so on. And I will tell you what, you guys, I am pleasantly surprised with how lovely they look, especially on black paper. Uh, they are quite uh, intense enough and there is a good variety. Again, as always, when you have a big variety of shades, some of them will, will be very, very similar. Uh, like, for example, some shades are just quite close to each other, so they might as well could have been not included in here. But... Uh, you can see some of the colors. I already can spot some of my favorites. And, and even though, as I said before, I will not be using this in my professional works, I definitely would have fun playing with some metallics from this set. Now, let's test out the rest of the colors. So these are the very bright fluorescent colors. I have sprayed them uh, with water just a couple of minutes ago. So let's see... Uh, what sort of a composition they have and yes they're very similar to the right side of the palette you know those first lot of colors that we tried Ooh, this is so bright even my brush fell over <laughs> let's see if it actually works out on the black paper yeah look at that okay here we go more colors oh i think i've forgotten to try out which color did i forget i think it's this one the gold one let's see 
I'll try it out anyway. So just here. Too many colors, that's what I mean, I get confused. <laughs> okay, this one looks super, super bright. I'm pretty sure um, you guys would know already, if you keep watching my videos, that uh, artist-grade paint usually would have the numbers on it to tell you how light, fast these colors are, which means how well these colors would last if they were exposed to UV uh, rays because this is not a artist grade paint and not even a high level student grade paint these things are missing and so these fluoro colors uh, just a word of warning they probably would not last for a very long time a lot of these artificially uh, sort of almost like dye based colors they have hard time staying as bright and as vibrant so they will fade out maybe they will change slightly to a different shade over time so from pink they will turn into maybe blue uh, or perhaps the yellow would just fade out and become very soft soft semi-transparent yellow so uh, again i haven't tested these colors out uh, for that sort of stuff but you know you can you can kind of imagine that this is not going to be something that would stay like this for 10 years of UV exposure uh, within the same sort of a range of brightness and richness. But these are beautiful though. It is fun to play with them. So if you love doing uh, coloring books and things like that just for fun, just for yourself, this is just absolutely wonderful. And it's also really sort of a budget friendly paint as well. Okay, so these are the fluoro colors uh, on the black paper. Uh, some of them are actually quite bright, but they actually do seem to pop up a little bit more on camera than they are in real life. In real life, they're not as sort of a white, not as, as glowy. On white paper, these fluorescent colors look absolutely gorgeous. They look like they're actually floating above the paper. I don't know if it carries through well uh, on the camera, but in real life, it's, it's lovely, absolutely lovely. As I said, don't rely on these colors to stay this way for a long period of time. They probably will fade. But as I said, so much fun to play with. Uh, if you've got children, they'd absolutely love playing with these uh, amazing, lovely variety of different shades. Uh, if you are a professional watercolorist that loves to paint natural landscapes and still lives, uh, you probably will be frustrated with this. Okay, let's have a look how the masking tape held up. Wow, look at that. So this is a second st st stuck on and you can see some of the colors bled a little bit. Uh, so yeah, definitely I would not use this on something very special. So something like swatches is fine, but if I'll be working on my proper painting, my art, I probably would only use these ones. But for the one time, it held up really well. I got two different thicknesses, so let's open up this one. Oh yeah, look at that. Look how thin this one is. So this would be perfect for these, you know, areas where I need a very, very thin definition between the two areas of color, uh, which can be perfect if you are working on sort of a somewhat abstract art or if you'd like to do tests and fit in quite a bit of stuff on your paper. And they each cost me $5.50. Uh, which is, you know, similar to the other uh, brands as well, uh, although there isn't as much in this packet here of the product as there would be in the other, but this is a very special situation where you really want to make sure that you've got a very, very thin edge between the two areas of color. And what will I tell you about the paint? Well, 
I absolutely had fun playing with the metallics and the uh, fluoro colors. I don't normally get this sort of stuff, but I absolutely, you know, had fun. So I would say if you love playing with paint, you love playing with different colors, go for it. It is a reasonably budget friendly paint as well. And it does even come in with a handy brush. So if you're a total newbie and you just want to have a go, just see what it's like, it can be a fun set. Um, if you are, on the other hand, an artist, you've been painting, you already have other kind of student grade paint, or even you moved on to artist grade paint, then I'd say this is probably not something that you should be investing into. But in any case, I will leave a link to this product under the video. Now, let's have a look at some other things that I also bought, um, and this time from the actual art shop. This is my local art shop that I go to. It's called Gordon Harris. I get most of my art supplies from there except for some specialty things that I get at Hobby City. I got a little bit of um, white paint. So I have had the Chinese white which is a semi-transparent. So this one's titanium white. So this should be quite opaque. Usually I use just white gouache but i thought why not get a watercolor as well and have that on hand if i need to i also got a um, pencil this is there's nothing really special about it it's just that one of the pencils that i had i've had for a while and it was sitting on the sun and the sort of a rubbery kind of uh, plastic that it had on started to get really sticky and just really disgusting so i had to chuck that out so i thought i'd get another one uh, this is just a regular, you know, your um, uh, 0 0.5 uh, mil lead in there. And it has a really nice grip. I quite like this pencil in the shop because, well, A, it was on special. <laughs> and B, um, it's reasonably wide. It's not super wide. I don't have really big hands, but it's um, it just seems to have a really nice grip, grip because it's not as thin as some other pencils are. So even working with it for a while, I have a feeling it will still be quite comfortable. Lifting up the lid. And um, a little eraser here. Oh yeah, it works really well. That's a lovely eraser. And picking out the eraser and then inside there you can see extra storage for LEDs. So there we go. So there's another one that's included obviously in the pack. Okay, so another thing that I bought is um, a couple of these uh, super long bristle uh, brushes. So you can kind of see how long they are versus the you know, your usual brushes. Now, the beauty of such a long bristle is that it can hold quite a bit of paint. So no matter whether you're using watercolor or acrylics, these both good for acrylic paint as well. Um, so I'd be using them with my own paintings, you know, not just tutorials and, and watercolor stuff, but also with my acrylic paintings. But um, what these would be good for is... Um, creating really long thin lines like this because it lasts for so long you see how long I'm going I haven't even loaded this brush all the way you see I just keep going and going and going and the paint just lasts and lasts and lasts so you can imagine how well it will work if I fully load it up so here it's already starting to dry out. So if you are working on thin long lines, something like this can be super beneficial because every time you need to break your line, so you do something like this and then it runs out of paint, you have to reload it and then start again. And then you get these sort of bumps, especially if you're quite new to this process. Now this one's Da Vinci brand synthetic nova brush and i'm not sponsored by any of this this is just the stuff that i got and that i i think you know would be quite beneficial for me and this is my favorite brushes are by windsor and newton so i wanted to get something from their brand as well that's this kind of a shape when you get new brushes sometimes they have this glue on them 
There's nothing wrong with it. Just make sure you wash it off just to help the brush keep its shape, you know, when it's in transit and so on and so on. So let's try this one. Oh, this is this is great as well. You can see how the color is fading out, but it keeps going and going and going. Um, please let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a video on brushes, say watercolor or acrylic, whatever you guys want to see. And I will go through all of the different brushes and their specialties and what they're best for. And like, look, look how long this one lasted. Although I did load this one up a little bit more versus this one. So it wasn't a very fair comparison but this brush would do really well for acrylics because acrylic brushes they usually tend to have the kind of a nature that if a little bit of paint is stuck on is dried on you can wash it off really well quite you know much easier let's put it that way versus say a natural bristle like for example you can't really or you shouldn't really use squirrel natural squirrel or artificial brushes that are mimicking squirrel uh, bristle, squirrel fur and acrylic painting because it will, you'll ruin it, you know, the tips will start to break off of the little individual um, hairs and you will have issues with it collecting too much paint over here because it will not be washing off and, and so on and so on. So you do want to use specific brushes if you want them to last for a long time and if you want to get the best of them for specific mediums and sometimes you know sometimes it says oh this is acrylic brush but you can get away with using it with watercolor for some uh, effects and uh, yeah but using your really beautiful um, expensive watercolor brushes with your acrylic paint that's a no-no unless you don't care about the brush and you want to check it out okay so this is what I've tried here now I would like to try this uh, watercolor and as I said this is oh gosh this is really coming out isn't it can you go back and paint can you go back in okay I'll have to allocate a little thing for it to put it into okay so let's have a look oh look at that that is beautiful look how how strong the color is so this is exactly why I wanted to get titanium white because it's such an opaque color now, if you want something transparent, you want to go for either Chinese white, you know, that it's a beautiful white for tinting. We're creating a little bit of the milky sort of a look. Uh, you will not get such a strong coverage as you would with this kind of a white. Now let's have a look what it looks like when we add more water to it. This is nice. Don't forget to subscribe because I want to make a video about different ways you can use white in your watercolor painting and there are more ways than you probably used to. So we used to like putting little highlights here and there with the white but there are so many different ways and even perhaps it might change the way you approach watercolor or white paint. Uh, in general. Okay and last but not least I also picked up this. Now I think this was the full price but I got this on special. This is just a palette. It is it says here it's for oils, acrylics and watercolor. I've used these before but I've used them in a different format so I almost never use them for watercolor. I prefer to use sort of a more of the ceramic kind of a palettes and for gouache I like to use plastic uh, and for acrylics I either use glass palettes or I use these throw away you know tear away and throw away palettes same for oils as well so oils would do well with glass palettes that you can scrape off at the end and these kind of palettes as well so let's have a look what this is
so the ones that I get that are made from the same sort of a material, so yeah, all the same stuff, they usually are like a pad, you know, like, like watercolor pads that you'd get. It's sort of attached on one side and I just tear away the piece of paper. But this one, this one is attached by these staples. Oh yeah, and they're very big, so they go all the way through to the back. So I guess every time you use up a sheet, you just remove those. Now it's quite a, it's shaped like the traditional, uh, traditional wooden palette. I don't know if you can get them bigger in size or smaller, but this, this looks like a handy size to sort of a have near your easel if you're working. As I said before, I use these for acrylic painting. So I'll show you my old one. So this is my old one and it's, um, you know, quite, quite close to running out. I still have a few pages there. Uh, but yeah, but this one, this one will be quite fun to use. And sometimes I love getting different things of different shape. It sort of keeps you a little bit more alert because when you get so used to using the one brush or the one, you know, palette or whatever it is, you kind of like, you know, you already instinctively go for things, but sometimes it's nice to have something to freshen things up. So the hole in the middle there, just like with traditional palettes, is to put your thumb through to make it easier for you to hold your palette if you love painting when you're standing up. So this was the old style, old masters used oil paint. And so they would stand like this and they would, you know, dig in, get some paint and paint and move around the canvas, especially if you're working on something large that you need to move around. Um, or standing up or whatever, I usually do like to have my palette attached to something. So I would have either a hook and, and my palette will be hanging down or I'd have it on my knees or I'll have it on a little sort of a movable table that I have on the wheels there that's sitting there and I'd be picking up the paintbrush because on my painting days, sometimes I'd sit for hours and hours and having something like that, you know, you'd get these um, really big, creases and things like that so yeah so these are the things that i have um got lately to try out and i thought you guys might like to have a look uh because sometimes i do get questions like what do you buy where do you go where do you shop what do you do what are your favorite things well, these are not necessarily favorite things these are just the things that i recently purchased okay you guys i loved everything that i got i think i will make a good use out of it and i think with that paint set my students would love having a go with that as well but i think my most favorite out of everything would probably be this brush because uh, off camera I tried it with acrylics as well and I absolutely love it. This brush, so this is a, um, a Winsor & Newton paintbrush and I will leave the links to the shops where I got them from and everything under the video so you can have a look for yourself. You probably would be able to find these um, maybe in your hometowns, uh, in some art shops and so on. So have a look uh, first, you know, support your local businesses. But all the other things I absolutely love as well. And they definitely will be finding their place in my studio now. And I will probably be repurchasing them, especially those tapes. Um, so if you'd like me to try something else or something like that, just please leave comments. I try to look at all the comments and at least the ones that YouTube notifies me with and I go and I uh, reply to you guys. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me and having this uh, relaxing unboxing and looking through new things. I love doing that as always. So, you know, makes me very happy. Big thank you to my wonderful patrons that are supporting this channel so thanks to all of my patrons and here are some of them on the screen please go and check out the patreon it's very affordable and a lot of fun and you also get to do a good thing as well by supporting uh, by supporting the creator that you love to watch videos from thank you very much guys for watching make sure to check out more videos and i will um, see you soon in the next video have a lovely day